Job hunting tends to follow a pretty standard formula. Write a great resume, answer a few standard questions about your background, impress the hiring manager, get a job. But that formula goes out the window when you're trying to join one of the most pioneering companies in the world. Let's take a look at 10 of the weirdest interview questions asked by big businesses. Number 10. How would you design a spice rack for the blind? Interviewers at Intel often ask applicants how they'd go about designing a spice rack for the blind. Take a second and think of how you'd answer. You have 15 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. Like most questions on this list, there's no right or wrong answer. Instead, this question aims to give the interviewer some insight into your personality and problem-solving skills. While there are dozens of possible answers, most people answer in one of two ways. First are people who would start by surveying the blind or learning more about visual impairments. Candidates who give this answer tend to be more methodical in decision-making and aware of the importance of research and decision-making. The second group of people launches directly into suggestions. They immediately start talking about Braille labels, aroma enhancements, voice recognition, and differently shaped bottles. This tells the interviewer that they're eager to provide solutions and are fine relying on intuition. While neither answer is wrong, anyone applying for more analytical roles should opt for a data-driven approach. Number 9. If you could only choose one song to play every time you walked into a room for the rest of your life, what would it be? You have 15 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. Google is notorious for asking strange questions. This is one of many they're reported to ask. Out of all of them on the list, this one seems the most innocuous. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't take it seriously. Your answer gives the interviewer an insight into a lot more than your musical taste. It also helps them measure your ability to think critically and empathetically. Those who blurt out the first thing that comes to mind come across as flighty and self-centered. You're not the only one who'll be stuck listening to that song for the next 50 or 60 years. Smart applicants will take a moment to ponder the question before outlining a few ways their choice of song might impact the people around them. For example, choosing courtesy of the red, white, and blue might sour your relations with anyone from the Middle East. It's also important that you choose a song that can be easily woven into a discussion of your workplace strengths. And for heaven's sake, don't pick something by Justin Bieber or Weird Al as they'll be looking to see if you recognize that over time, the song might be frustrating. So your choice will tell a lot about how you think. Number eight, pick a city. How many piano tuners do you think operate a business there? You'll have 20 seconds to think of your answer before I explain. Google called, they've got another weird question for you. For those of us looking to be web developers, this question comes straight out of left field. While it seems irrelevant on the surface, it's actually a great way to test your logic skills and gain some insight into how you act under pressure. You math freaks out there will quickly recognize this question as a Fermi problem. This means that a correct answer to the problem can be found by multiplying a series of estimates together that, if correct, would result in the correct answer. A good answer to this question might start, however many the market dictates. If pianos need tuning once every two weeks, and it takes two hours to tune a piano, and a piano tuner works eight hours a day for five days a week, there'd be about one tuner for every 40 pianos. You should then go on to estimate the population of the city and the approximate number of pianos there are to get a decent estimation. If you want to get really fancy, you can do the math. Warning, arithmophobes look away. Number seven, what is the minimum amount of times you can grab a sock out of a drawer that has 50 white socks and 50 black socks to make sure you have two that match? You have 15 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. The tech companies strike again. 
This question comes to us courtesy of Fast Enterprises, an information consultant firm. This question is another one meant to check the soundness of your critical thinking skills. Before you start spouting numbers, you need to take a second to think about the answer. Let's make one thing clear. It's not 51, 49, or 50. It's actually three. Many people make the mistake of thinking they need a pair of a specific color, black or white. The question, however, is how many draws it takes to get a pair of any color. Therefore, as there are only two colors in the drawer, you'll always have a pair on the third draw. Some companies ask a more complicated version of this question that goes something like this. How many socks do you need to pull out of a drawer containing 10 white, 12 black, and 4 red socks to guarantee a pair? But rest assured that the logic is the same. This time, the answer is 4. Number 6. If you had a choice between two superpowers, being invisible or flying, which would you choose? You have 10 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. Microsoft couldn't let Google have all the fun. While this question seems silly, it gives the interviewer a good idea of your social and public speaking skills. It's a great way to gauge someone's suitability for customer facing and leadership roles because statistically, these sort of people align closely depending on their response. People who choose to be invisible tend to be less confident, less in control, and less powerful. They're also likely to be uncomfortable in the public eye. Applicants who say they choose to fly are more likely to have a healthy level of self-esteem and strong public speaking skills. While you can explain many of these assumptions away with a well-articulated answer, most applicants would be better off claiming they'd want the power to fly if leadership roles are what they're looking for. Number 5. Can you name three consecutive days without using the words Wednesday, Friday, or Sunday? You have 10 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. It makes sense that one of the world's biggest knowledge sharing platforms, Quora, would go for a question like this. This classic brain teaser sets out to test whether or not an applicant can think outside the box. This question is most often posed to those applying to creative positions. Logic-leaning applicants will frown at the interviewer for a moment, their face one of total befuddlement. Many of them will begin to mutter the days of the weeks beneath their breath and quickly conclude that this question is impossible. Those with a more robust imagination, however, are quick to answer with a grin. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And this is the answer most interviewers are looking for. Rest assured that it's also perfectly acceptable to spit out the days of the week in a foreign language or start spitting out numbers on the calendar. The real test here is not what someone says, it's whether or not they have an answer at all. Number four, tell me something that's true that almost nobody agrees with you on. You have 10 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. Learning how to answer this question can pay off for people looking to work at PayPal. Peter Thiel, the co-founder of PayPal and Founders Fund, is always looking for people that aren't afraid to speak their minds. When asked why this question is his favorite, he replied, it sort of tests for originality of thinking, and to some extent, it tests for your courage in speaking up in a difficult interview context. If this question is tossed your way, say something courageous. Just don't say something overly controversial. Racist, homophobic, and flat earther nonsense has no place in a job interview. A good applicant might say, time machines exist, or cheese is disgusting. They would then give a few reasons why they believe that to be true. The important thing is that it's a claim that cannot be easily refuted through data. Number three, a cable of 80 meters is strung between the top of two poles that are both 50 meters from the ground. What is the distance between the two poles to one decimal place if the center of the cable is 10 meters above the ground? You have 15 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. While there are other versions of this question meant to test your memory of trig class, this one can be solved without a calculator. 
Amazon designed it to test an applicant's critical thinking skills. An overeager applicant will immediately leap into calculations, only half listening to the interviewer. They'll slog through five minutes of algebraic equations before arriving at an answer that can be discerned through common sense. If you have an 80 meter long rope hung between two poles so that it hangs 10 meters above the ground, there can be no distance between the two poles. The rope is just folded in half and hung from the same peg. This question just goes to reinforce how important it is to look before you leap. Number two, how many quarters would you need to reach the height of the Empire State Building? You have 15 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. JetBlue isn't in the quarter stacking business. That fact doesn't make this question any less relevant. Again, the interviewer doesn't expect you to know an exact number. They're just trying to see how your brain works. So you won't win any brownie points by just blurting out a number. Take a moment to mull the question over and then slowly walk the interviewer through your thought process. You could say something like, a quarter is about 0.05 inches thick. This means that they're about 240 in a foot. I also know the Empire State Building is about 1400 feet tall, excluding the antenna. So if you stack them on top of the other, it would take 336,000 of them, or $84,000 in quarters to reach the top. Even if your answer is wrong, it shows the interviewer that you aren't afraid to tackle difficult questions and can think your way out of some puzzling situations. Including extra details such as the antenna and stacking method will help you come across as thoughtful and attentive. Number one, why are manhole covers round? You have 15 seconds to think of an answer before I explain. This question is commonly used by Microsoft to judge promising candidates. It's designed to test a candidate's creative problem-solving skills, common sense, and his or her ability to perform under pressure. It's also the second question on this list with a correct answer. Joel Spolsky, an early program manager at Microsoft, thinks that questions like this help companies distinguish between people who are smart and get things done and people who get things done but aren't smart. Let's help you come across as someone who's both. There are actually quite a few reasons that manholes are round. First, a round manhole cover cannot fall through its hole. The same cannot be said for a square one inserted diagonally. Secondly, there's no wrong way to fit a circle into a circular hole. This makes it much easier to put the cover back in place. Thirdly, round tubes hold up better against the Earth's compressional forces than rectangular ones. As long as you can explain your reasoning, any answer is acceptable. There are even rumors they ask a similar question to Xerox, which is, instead of manholes, they ask candidates to explain why tennis balls are fuzzy. Can you guess why the balls are fuzzy? You have 10 seconds to think up an answer. The answer to this question is twofold. First off, the felt covering helps make the ball softer and helps to regulate its bounce. Furthermore, the fuzz makes it easier to spin the ball. Without that fabric, you'd be left trying to play tennis with a ball of flubber. Do you feel better prepared for your next interview? Or have you ever been asked an interview question that threw you for a loop? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, thanks for watching.